Metaphysics talks about what is real. Now, sometimes they show that things that seemed real aren't real. But can it work the other way around? Can metaphysics show there are real things that we never even thought existed? Let's consider. I can't get it off my mind. Hello, philosophers. I'm Chico. Welcome to The Philosopher Show, where we consider the greatest questions of human history. I think one of the most awesome aspects of science is the discovery of new things. My kids are hooked on octonauts. I have a, an 11 year old, a five year old, and a one year old. The, the two younger ones love octonauts. And I have to admit, man, I've learned about some weird stuff that seemed pretty interesting, like siphonophores. If you don't know what a siphonophore is, Google that. So watch the Octonaut episode and they'll totally explain it to you. But it had to be sick to be the first person to discover something that bizarre. Now philosophy doesn't go about exploring things empirically like science does. It does take the empirical discoveries of science, but empirical exploration isn't really a methodology that, that philosophers can use. So for example, one of our questions is, what is existence? What does it mean to be real? Now we can't go out and observe non-real things and compare them to real things because non-real things by definition don't exist. So they're not empirically observable. And that's okay. It's just a different kind of knowledge with a different kind of method of exploration. Now in metaphysics, we talk about the deepest level of reality. Can metaphysics discover new real things? Some philosophers believe that it can. These philosophers believe they're using abductive logic to posit an entity. Now, abductive logic is reasoning to the best possible explanation. So for example, I'm gonna give you a nasty example. I apologize ahead of time. I don't know why this is what was in my head when I thought about this. I remember one day I went to my aunt's house, Thea Jenny, right? And she had a little dog, Coco. I accidentally scared Coco and Coco went number twos on the carpet. I went to go get a paper towel to pick it up and throw it away. When I came back, the number twos had disappeared. And all that was left was Coco standing there looking where the, at the scene of the crime, licking her chops. And that was the day I discovered that dogs eat their own number twos sometimes. Or as my tia used to say, eat their own poopies. I didn't know dogs ate their own poopies. Do I know for a fact that Coco ate her own poopies? No, not absolutely certain. There are other theories. Maybe aliens beamed themselves into my aunt's house, grabbed up the poopies, and beamed themselves out. Possible? Sure. So what I'm left with, with abductive logic, is a good reason to believe one thing. So metaphysicians think that they start off with abductive logic, and then they go and posit an entity. Let me show you how this happens in science. The amount of matter in a system of bodies in space affects the amount of gravity that holds it together. Bodies are in orbit around another body or around each other only if there is the right amount of gravity to keep them in that orbit, and that gravity is there only if there's the right amount of matter. And the faster it turns, the more gravity you're gonna have to have to keep it together. Just like if you're an old person like me and you used to have the merry-go-round, we used to hold on to the to the center thing, and like you'd lay down and one kid would run as fast as he could and spin that thing as fast, and you'd be holding on, and the faster you went, man, you were holding on for dear life, just holding, like hoping you didn't just fly off. <laughs> Oh, we were stupid kids. So more speed around, more strength, more gravity needed to keep you together. Now in the early 20th century, all matter that had been observed reflected light. So by the amount of light that was reflected from a body in space, you can kind of guesstimate the amount of matter that that thing must have. Along comes Fritz Zwicky, a scientist who in 1933 was observing the Kama galaxy cluster. He sees how much light is given off of that estimates the amount of matter that must be there, then measures the speed with which it's rotating and says something's wrong here. There's not enough matter, based on my calculations from the light given, to hold this galaxy cluster together. One thing we could conclude is that gravity over there is a lot stronger than gravity over here. For some reason that seems like a little too weird. Another theory we could have is possibly there's some matter that doesn't reflect light, and that would account for why there is more matter than the light would indicate in that galaxy cluster. So check the method. Zwicky observes a phenomenon, and he posits an entity, dark matter. Notice he didn't observe dark matter. He said, what if this thing existed? And then he says, how well would it explain what I just saw, and how many weird things would I have to believe in based on this new existing thing? The idea that gravity is different in different places of the universe, ah, uh, that's a lot. The idea that there's some matter that doesn't reflect light, that's not so weird. And so, dark matter is posited. Now that's something that can eventually be observed. And we said in metaphysics, we can't observe things. So some philosophers have said, 
maybe this isn't the right way to go about doing metaphysics. But think about this. There are some scientific theories that lead to conclusions that are not observable. So for example, Big Bang Theory. The idea here is we see certain effects, the cosmic background radiation, Doppler effect of light, and we say, what must the cause have been like? And then we posit an entity, a Big Bang, and we see how nicely that explains what we're seeing right now, and we weigh that against kind of some of the weird stuff we're going to have to believe in. But notice, the scientists can't go and actually observe a Big Bang. Not like you make a Big Bang in your laboratory, it would destroy our entire universe and you couldn't observe it. So here's something that we can't observe, and we're positing as a real thing because it seems to explain what we can observe. And it seems to explain it best. That is what some metaphysicians think that they're doing. For example, realists about universals. And if you don't know what I'm talking about yet, go to the universals playlist uh, and you'll see what I'm talking about. But realists see abstract reference, attribute agreement, predication. They say, what would best explain this stuff? Let's posit an entity we'll call universals, a real thing out there. How well does it explain everything? How much weird stuff do we have to believe in? And realists think the explanatory power way outweighs the weird stuff that you have to believe in. So this is a good reason to believe that universals are real. And that, my friends, is what some metaphysicians think they're doing. Again, as I always say, best philosophy happens in dialogue. Hit me up in the comments. What do you think about it? Is this a legitimate way to go about doing metaphysics? And don't forget to like and subscribe. Please share with your friends so they can join the conversation. And that's all I got for today. Adios.